Hey everyone, it's Linnea, and I apologize for my scratchy voice. Unfortunately, I still have a cold that's kicking my butt. We're going on a couple weeks now, um, so I apologize for that. But I wanted to show you this technique that I uh, did for these cards for kindred stamps. I purchased a brayer at my local craft store because I never had one before, and I thought that they would give some pretty awesome texture like you can see here. So I grabbed some of my Distress Oxide inks and I started with Cracked Pistachio. And all I did was just roll my brayer over the ink pad, picking up some ink, and then roll it over my card. I'm only using about half of my brayer here, the left half, so that I can better control where my color goes. So now I've moved on to the Peacock Feathers and I'm going to keep on um, putting my brayer into the ink pad bringing it to my cardstock and going back and forth and back and forth. Honestly, in the end, I like how my piece turned out, but I like the texture that I'm seeing here. And by the time I got all done, I had brayered and pressed so hard that I lost all of my texture. So I do encourage you to not brayer as much as I do, and you're going to see me make a couple of cards here so that I could get the look I was more looking for. So with this uh, Faded Jeans Distress Oxide ink, I got a little bit too close to the edge. I was trying to keep my ink more towards the center and so that I could use this whole piece as um, like a centered little, oh, I don't know, a focus area, I guess. So I got too close to the edge with the Faded Jeans Distress Oxide ink. So now I decided to just go back in with the peacock feathers and with the cracked pistachio and take it all the way to the edge. And you can see I still have some texture, but I definitely lost that textured look that I was going for originally. So I'm going to try again with shaded lilac ink. And this time I'm using the whole brayer. So I'm inking up first the left-hand side and then kind of moving to the middle and then to the right-hand side. And I'm just going to roll the ink onto my cardstock, but trying to keep some of that texture because I really like how it looks so distressed. And that's what I was going for. So I brayered on uh, the short ways and now I'm going on with the long way. And I love how this turned out. Don't get me wrong, I do love the first one in the end. Um, but I, this was more of the look that I was going for. So I'm going to grab my Distress Sprayer and take out the little nozzle and just flick on some water. And look how immediately chalky that looks with that Distress Oxide ink. It looks so cool. And I wanted to have some dark purple spatters as well. So I'm using here um, Seedless Preserves, and I'm just going to add some water and flick it on with my paintbrush. I tend to over flick, so this time I tried my best to stop myself and just let it dry. So now I have this swirl stencil from Kindred Stamps and some white pigment ink and a Distress ink tool. And I'm just going to pounce on some of this white ink over the top. And it, I know you can't feel it, but I'm touching it because it's so smooth. I put so much pressure on with this brayer that I think it really, the ink is just so smooth and so chalky. And that white pigment ink is going to dry back as it dries and it just has this like ethereal effect. I love it. So I'm using my Staedtler felt tip markers. These are what I usually do my watercoloring with. And so for the skin tone here on this little chubby mermaid, I'm blending together both a pale pink and like a pale tan so I can get that perfect flesh tone color. I always work in groups when I do this. So you can see I did all of the mermaid's tails and then I'm adding color to all of the little starfish and then I'll blend all of that out together. And I just use a water brush and I have a microfiber towel out of frame here and all I'm doing when I switch from color to color is just quickly wiping it onto that towel so I don't transfer colors from like the pink to the yellow or from you know the blue to the purple or whatever so I'm not contaminating my colors. I'm gonna start coloring in the hair here and I left this in so you can see kind of a little bit of my process. I just add color around the edges. I'm not good with shading. I'm not good with coloring. So I just do what works best for me. I just kind of go around the outside and then I'm going to blend in all the colors. So like I said, I work in groups. I had added color to every one of the mermaid's hair and then I came in and blended it out with my water brush. Quick and easy. That's why I love watercoloring. To me, it's just the easiest thing for me and I love the results. 
So I apologize, I didn't realize my iPad battery had died. So here are the finished cards. All I did was cut out those little images and I added some white heat embossed sentiments. You didn't see me create this background, but this was what I was trying to do that first time. So I kept my inks towards the center of my panel and in the end it wasn't exactly centered so I ended up trimming down the one side. So that's why there's those little edges of my card peeking out. And I added some sequins from the Tarte Shaker Pack just to kind of embellish that a little bit. This one is the one you saw me make on camera with the brayer, and we ended up covering the entire card panel with the ink. Look how much that white ink faded back into the Distress Oxide ink. I love how that turned out. I added some sequins from the Unicorn Hair Mix and a white heat embossed sentiment to that one as well. This one is the Shaded Lilac. Um, inked piece. And you can see where I flicked on that purple ink over the Distress Oxide ink. It kind of ate up that purple and it's a lighter purple but around the white edges of the card it's still that dark purple. I love that look. These are my favorite sequins, the Owl Post sequins. So I added those to the purple because I love purple and gold together. And those are all three of the cards I made using the Chubby Mermaid stamp set. I hope you enjoyed, and remember that you can go over to my blog or the Kindred Stamps blog for more information and still photos. I'll see you next time. Bye!